Hi everyone. So now it's time to code our k-means algorithm. So how we will approach this, we will create just one class named k-means and then we will implement all the necessary methods inside it, right? So let's start. We can call it k-means. So we will have our usual init method. Let's assume we are going to receive the data for now from k, which is uh, the main parameter, and the path where the data is. So here we can save our, in the same path, we can create a folder to save the output of the algorithm. We are going to use one function called normalize to normalize the data, and I have it implemented here, right? So you can pause the video and check the function and Code it yourself in your util, utils file, right? So I'm gonna import this function here. And uh, so here, the data, we will save the data in a normalized way. The normalization function needs to receive the columns that we will consider for the normalization. So let's assume that all the columns are useful here and that the range is going to be from 0 to 1. We can always change that, right? So we need to capture the parameter k. We are going to need the some general specifications of the data that we can save in a variable. Let's say the dimension is going to be the shape of the data, the second term of the shape of the data which is at the end the number of columns, right? And the number of points are also going to be necessary and is going to be the first number of the shape of the data. And, uh, and that's it for now. So let's start writing the run function and then we will implement the other, the necessary method. So as you already know, there is one main iteration. So let's just start with a let's also print the iteration as we go. Okay, so the first thing, as you already know from our previous example, is that we need the matrix G that saves the basically the memberships, right? And let's assume we're going to have a method for that called get assignation matrix, where we're going to have like a binary vector for every data point telling us what are the memberships, right? And for this, we need the centroids. So here, we know that initially we need the, the initial random centroids. So let's assume we're going to have a method for that called get initial centroids. And this is going to need the ranges, right, to generate them. So the ranges are going to be generated via method called get ranges. So of course, no worries, we're going to implement every single method here. So we get the ranges and then we generate the centroids from the ranges and we start the process, the iteration process. After having the matrix, we will save the previous centroid. I'm going to assume I'm using a centroids uh, data frame, right? So I'm going to copy it. So later I'm going to update the centroids. So these are the new centroids. And to update the centroids, we need the matrix G with the memberships, right? And then I will assess the convergence. I will check if we converge or not. So for that, we need the previous centroids. That's it. Let's increment the iteration here. 
this is the general iteration process. We create the ranges, we generate the initial centroids, and then we get designation matrix from the initial centroids, we save the centroids, we update them according to the matrix, and then we assess convergence. So if we are not converging here, we're gonna be back, update the matrix with the new centroids, update the centroids, and so on. So it's very simple, it's exactly what we saw in the previous video. Now it's time to implement the methods. So let's start by the generation of the ranges. Let's save the ranges. So it's gonna be in a dictionary. So per every feature or every variable in the data, we are going to have one tuple to save the range. Let's initialize this that way. Right, okay, so now we're gonna iterate similarly here. Name for this. Okay, so what is each range? We are going to obtain this from the data and uh, at the end, we just need to capture the minimum value and the maximum data point value on every variable. So we are assuming that there are no data points that live out of the range of the data that we already have. That, of course, might change in the future and we need to make sure that we set the range properly. So it's gonna be numpy.minimum and we need to import We are going to go over every column and the maximum. That's it. So we will return the ranges. Okay, this is our get ranges method. Now we need to implement this one, get the initial centroids. Let's initialize the centroids as a pandas data frame. So we need to import pandas here. So we need to give it the data and the columns. So let's start with just zeros. We can create this from an MP array. And here, how many centroids are going to be K, right? So it's gonna be k centroids and the length of each centroid is the same as the dimensionality of the data. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, here I'm missing another parenthesis. And the columns are going to be the same as the data. It is good to use a data frame because later we can have direct access to the name of the variables and all that. Okay, so now we are going over every variable and generate a random number that falls within the range. So the centroid J, F, right? is the centroid J and the variable F and in pandas we need to use locate. It's gonna be a random number. We can use numpy that random that uniform to create these values. And the limits are the ranges, right? So here we know that we are working in feature F, right? And uh, for the first variable we are using the first number here. And for the second, we're using this one, right? Remember, we're using a dictionary, so the first number indicates the key, but then inside each key, we have two numbers. The first one is the minimum, and the second one is the maximum of the range. So with this, we are creating random centroids on every variable for the K centroids. We just need to return them now. Okay, now we need to implement the method called get the assignation matrix, right? This 
method needs the centroids. So let's first initialize the matrix just with zeros. So what's going to be the shape of the matrix? We want as many rows as data points and as many columns as k, right? We want k columns. Why? Because we, we for every data point, remember that the assignation matrix puts a 1 in the column related to the centroid. Okay, let's specify here the type. Let's use an integer. We're going to need this later because we want to use this matrix to select the data points that are going to be used for the update of the centroids, right? For the average, in other words. So now we need to iterate over the data points. And here we see the first big cost, right? So what we do here is that we calculate the distance of every data point to all the centroids and select the minimum one. So usually how we do this is we initialize the minimum distance to infinity such that in the first calculation is going to be already updated with the first calculated distance. And then it's going to be updated only in case we get a better or smaller distance. And here we go over K, right? We iterate over the different centroids. So let's calculate the distance for this. It's just Euclidean, so let's use a NumPy function going to be between um, the data point in position i using all the variables minus the centroid so here centroid j all the variables right and two to indicate that is l2 norm right is the square root of the difference on every variable. Okay, again, this is another parenthesis here. And uh, so here we check if this distance is better or not, that the current best. And in that case, we update our current best and we update the center, the best center on this case is J. Right? Meaning that here we update our matrix. So for the data point I and in the column C, we put a 1. Right? So that's it. Now we return the matrix. Okay, so again, we, we, as you can see, we go over every single data point, we calculate the distance between the data point and every center or centroid, and we capture the minimum. And after we capture the minimum, we store that one in the matrix. So again, we, when we go over the next data point, we again initialize the current best distance to infinity, such that later it gets updated when we find a better distance. Okay, great. What else? Uh, the other important function is this one. We need to update the centroids after we get the assignation matrix. So here we want to use a variable called, let's call it new centroids. And it's again, it's going to be a data frame. So it's this thing. We're going to initialize this this way. To update them, we need to go over every centroid and calculate the average across the data points that belong to that centroid or to that cluster, right? So here we iterate over the centroids. We have k centroids. So let's save the index. In other words, is where our matrix G for the centroid is equal to 1. 
So here, as you can see, we are capturing all the rows in where centroid J is the one that is selected. In other words, we are getting all the indexes of the data points that belong to the centroid J. First, we need to check if there are actually data points there. It might be nothing, right? So one way of doing that is like if we sum the index has to be a number greater than zero. Now we just need to update the centroids, right, by getting the average over the points that belong to the group, right? So we will update the centroid J, right? And this center is going to be the average or mean of the data in the index, right? So it's going to be the data only selecting the index data points. Okay, so then we just return the new centroids. What else? Okay, now we need to implement the function called uh, check conversions. So it's this. a shorter name there okay so let's define an epsilon constant to check the conversions for now it could be like let's say here e to the minus three for now okay this constant is going to be used to see if the difference is small enough right so we're gonna manage a delta variable that will measure this difference across the different centroids let's initialize this with zeros of size k, yeah, because remember that convergence means that all the centroids didn't move, so we need to have the delta for all the centroids and convergence variable to false. Okay, so we iterate over the centroids. And the delta related to this centroid is the basically the Euclidean distance between the cent the previous centroids and the centroids. So we are going to get centroid minus previous centroids j and uh, we're gonna use this function to get the Euclidean distance. So it's basically the L2 norm Okay, so after this for loop, we have the deltas for every centroid. Now we need to see if all the deltas are still smaller than the epsilon, right? We can do this in several ways, but one way is doing just this. We check if delta is less or equal than epsilon. So what we are doing is checking that for every delta, if it is smaller than epsilon and we are going to get a binary vector here it's going to be one for the deltas that are accomplishing this condition and it's going to be zero for the others so if this sum is equal to k it means that this happened for all the centroids so whenever this delta is less or equal than epsilon for all the centroids it means that we already converged Okay, 